Microbsy Industries, what kind of a company are you? What are you delivering? Right. We're a robotic software company, so we don't make robots. We make software that drives robots and moves robots. Uh, what we're doing is, uh, our first product is called Mirai, which is a uh, controller for giving hand-eye coordination to industrial robots, which means essentially um, you buy your robot from a third party, ABB or Universal Robots, um, you uh, run it with its, you know, just the usual um, robot controller that comes with the machine, and then you add our controller to um, drive some part of the robot's movement, typically the fiddly part, uh, in the, uh, you know, before it makes contact with, uh, with something else. Um, you drive that directly from a camera in real time, which is what our controller enables the robot to do. So what exactly is Microsy or Mirai, uh, in, in what way uh, is Mirai enabling the robot? What can it do more than without Mirai? So reacting to many kinds of variants uh, in the world um, by visually finding the features that are relevant to your movement is what Mirai actually does. So when you go through the training, when you train a robot to perform a movement based on what it sees with the camera, it sort of self-tailors to find the visual features in the images that are relevant for making the right movements. Um, and that's really what we, what we bring to the game. And then it uses that 20, 30 times a second um, by looking at the world and making the right movement that you as a human would make uh, in the same situation. So what is hardware um, is um, needed to be able to use Mirai? I mean, uh, what kind of sensors? So, um, I mean, you need to buy a robot. Um, as mentioned, it's either going to be one of the Universal Robots machines or uh, ABB um, robots, both of them very good machines. Then you need the uh, Microsoft Industries Mirai robot controller, which um, you know, gets added um, logically to the uh, robot controller that comes with the machine. Then we have a force torque sensor. We usually use the ones by OnRobot um, for showing movements to the robot. Uh, so by you know, guiding it, literally taking it by the wrist and making the movement with the robot um, to generate the training data. There's a camera. Uh, the camera actually comes with uh, our control box, so you don't need to worry about that. You mount that to the wrist or to the table, and then some form of end effector. Um, this could be a gripper or you know, some vacuum pump or something for you know, doing whatever you want to do uh, in the world. You connect all these pieces, uh, most of them to our control box, uh, and there's a tablet app um, that allows you go to go through the robot training for two or three afternoons until your robot has picked up um, you know, the, the tricky part of the movement you wanted to make. And what kind of work is the robot then able to do and what it wasn't able to do before? Yeah, and the most concise, if slightly abstract way of putting it is um, fine positioning of the robot end effector uh, towards some visual feature. Uh, and anywhere where you need that, um, our product sort of shines. So this can be, the things we've discussed is just plugging in things or uh, touching certain points uh, that are always looking slightly different uh, or are in a different place uh, with a measuring probe or finding points for starting a then deterministically executed movement, for instance, in welding, or you know, in soldering, finding the point where you need to put the solder point, the solder point um, putting glue. These are, these are all applications that we've looked into and where we think uh, this would actually work or have tried it, and it actually does work. So who are your customers or your potential customers? Um... Anybody who runs a factory uh, and either employs uh, people today to hand coordinate, uh, to hand eye coordinate some movement that they make uh, in an assembly um, or in testing, or anybody who is just designing a factory where that would be necessary and where we now have the option to do that at a very high level of consistency and quality with the robot. Microbsy Industries, um, let me ask you why this name? Why, why Microbsy Industries? Yes, so yeah, it's actually, you said it's three parts, Microbsy and Industries. Um, we actually do pronounce micro the American way, micro, psi, as it would be P-S-E-E, -E, uh, which is the German pronunciation of the Greek letter psi uh, and Industries, um, to make it particularly hard for the Americans to pronounce it, Microbsy, I'm sorry about that. 
Um, the individual components are, let's start with Psi, that's the name of a theory of a German psychologist that we um, liked and started to work with some 15, 20 years back when you know, the team got into AI. Um, micro was like a gesture of, um, of humility towards the guy. We knew him and you know, he was a big professor, we were just some students. So we said, yeah, that's the, that's the micro version of what he does uh, for putting artificial agents into dynamic situations and learning how to deal with them. That's really what Psi theory, theory and uh, consequently micro Psi is about. And then industries was uh, almost a bit of a joke when we started. We didn't know how, you know, how deep the industry rabbit hole would be but almost as a self-chosen, self-fulfilling prophecies, we put it there also just because it sounds cool. Um, and then we, we got approached by industry people. There are many around of those uh, in, in Germany famously and said, yeah, you can, you can do AI for industry. That sounds useful. Um, and then we just said, okay, let's, let's roll with that. And that's how it happened. And so nowadays you are able to add value to industries, to manufacturers. If you look to the future, five or 10 years from now, uh, what would you, would you love microbes industries to be able to deliver furthermore? Yeah, I mean, part of the plan is um, to move out of factories uh, with what we're doing. Any future that you can imagine 10, 15 years ago uh, in, in, in the future, where there's robots and the robots have cameras and arms, um, you cannot imagine that all the movements that these arms uh, make are pre-programmed by a human who just wrote down how to move all the joints. That's nonsense. That's not how it's going to be. Th those movements will be learned. And um, part of the long-term plan and part of the long-term platform buildup uh, that we're working on is um, to drive essentially any coordinate movements that uh, robot limbs would make. Uh, we, I mean, we call it a machine learning driven operating layer um, for, for robotic manipulators or even larger robot assemblies.